Hi, what I'm going to do today is a video on a medium difficulty kinematics problem. So the problem we're going to work with today, you're driving down the highway late one night at 20 meters per second, which is around 45 miles an hour, when a deer steps out onto the road 35 meters in front of you. Your reaction time before stepping on the brakes is 0.5 seconds, and the maximum deceleration of your car is 10 meters per second squared. And then there are two questions. So the first question, how much distance is between you and the deer when you come to a stop? So how much safety net do you have? The second question, what is the maximum speed you could have and still not hit the deer? So that's the problem. And we're gonna use our standard problem solving process, which I always start with a picture. You gotta know what we're talking about. So here we've got a car going down the road at 20 meters per second and somewhere down the road there's a deer. Oh my goodness, how do you draw a deer? Um, there's a head, antlers. So look, it's a four point block. And we know that initially there's 35 meters between the two and we have a reaction time of half a second. We started at 20 meters per second, 35 meters, and the maximum deceleration of the car is 10 meters per second squared. Okay, there's our picture, and I'm going to draw a coordinate system. So it's a one-dimensional problem, so ooh, I'm just going to use one dimension to the right, I'm going to say is positive. Next up, we write down what we know and what we're looking for. So here is our chart of variables. And for most of these kinematics problems, we're gonna use these, these six variables, initial position, final position, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. What do we know? All right, so we can set our origin wherever we want. So I'm gonna say x initial is zero. My origin is right where we start. You can often do this. And it's often makes the most sense to set your origin right at zero. X final, now you might want to say, oh, it's 35 meters. But here we've got to stop. We don't uh, hit the deer. That's not our stopping point. That's not the point where we're ending. Well, hopefully we don't hit the deer. We want to know, the first question is, how much distance is there between you and the deer before, when you come to a stop? So we're going to stop somewhere in the middle here. So our ending point is around here, hopefully. And here, our final velocity is zero because we have come to a stop. So we can't set x final to be 35. We don't know what our x final is. And if you think about it, that's what we want to find out. We want to know how much distance is between the deer and us when we stop. So we want to know what this distance is. Well, if we find out how far we went, which is x final, then we can subtract that from 35 and know where we, what distance between us and the deer. All right, so we don't know x final. That's really what we're looking for. V initial, do we know that? Well, we know we start off at 20 meters per second. All right. And you might say V final is zero. Our maximum deceleration is 10 meters per second squared, and you might dump in that half a second there. And if you do this, you will not get the right answer because there are actually two pieces of information or two times that we're interested in. We have a reaction time of half a second before we hit the brake. That means that we're moving at that 20 meters per second for half a second before we start to slow down. So this is not always true because we don't slow to a stop in half a second and we're moving at constant speed for that half a second so we can't have an acceleration. Constant speed means no acceleration. So there's multiple ways to figure this out. One of the ways to do this would be to say, okay, I'm gonna have the slowing down part be here and then I'm going to have my reacting time be a second set of variables. So x initial, x final, v initial, v final, a, t. 
see if I can get one of these to not squeak. So reacting is really where we started at zero. So I'm going to set that to be zero, which means this one is not zero. X final, we don't know where we are compared to our origin when we start hitting the break. So we don't know this. Do we know how fast we're going? Absolutely. We know we're going at 20 meters per second when we start reacting. How fast are we going when that reaction time is over? 20 meters per second. All right. How much acceleration do we have during that time? Well, if we're moving at a constant speed, if these two are the same number, cruise control is on, there is no acceleration. How much time does it take us to react? This is the 0.5 seconds. So this time is not 0.5. We don't want that there. Okay, now does this feel right? During the reaction time, we start at origin. What we chose is our origin. We don't know how far we go. We start at 20 meters per second. We hold that 20 meters per second. There's no acceleration and it lasts for half a second. So that's our reaction time. Then once we have that reaction time, then we move to the slowing down phase. We don't know where we start, but we do know that where we ended here is going to be the same as the starting there. So we're going to move forward a little bit in this reaction phase. And then wherever we end here, the final position here is going to be where we start for our second phase. So I do know that this is going to be the same as that. This X final is still where we want, what we want to solve for. That's where do we end up? Where are we when we come to a stop? Is this still true? When we start hitting the brake, are we moving at 20 meters per second? Yes. When we end our interesting times here, are we at zero or we stopped? Yes. And here is where we have 10 meters per second. We don't know how much time it takes us. All right. If you think about this, these two charts, there's one error here, something we haven't considered. What I'd like you to do is hit, hit pause and see if you can figure out where the error is. So go ahead and do it. Hit pause. Okay. Did you figure it out? It's not here. This is all good. It's over in this side. Where do you think the error is? Well, we are moving at 20. We're moving to the right, so that's positive. And we end at zero. No sign there. Here we go. If we're slowing down and moving to the right, that means that we have a negative acceleration. We're slowing down. This is a negative value. If you had done all this math with a positive value, you would have come up with something, an unreasonable answer, like a negative time or something, because the math would say, um, if you're speeding up, accelerating with a positive acceleration, speeding up, you can't go from 20 to zero. That's not going to happen. So we have to throw that negative in there because we're slowing down. We're moving in a positive direction and we're slowing down. These have to have opposite signs. All right, now we've got it. It's set up. I, in order to solve for this, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to figure out this first. So let's solve for this piece first. And then once I know this x final, I can bring it into this x initial and solve for that part. Okay, so we've got it all set up. We know what we're looking for. And now we say which equation is going to help us. I always jump to the long equation first because it's got so many different variables. It almost always has the thing I'm looking for. So I want x final. I know my x initial. I know my v initial. Don't know time. One half I know a is zero. So this whole term drops out and this whole term drops out. Okay, so can I use this? X final is going to be v initial t. Can't use it. Oh, yeah, I can. Look at that. <laughs> I thought we didn't have time. We do have it. So we do know that. I was thinking about that one. Yeah, we make mistakes as teachers too. But then we catch it. So x final in this first reaction time is the initial velocity, 20 meters per second, times the time, half a second. You can do that one in your head. What's half of 20? So how far have we gone? In that reaction time, we've gone 10 meters. Does that seem reasonable? Okay, so it's going to take us 10 meters just to start hitting the brake. A little bit long, but I guess, yeah, if we're going about 45 meters per second and it takes 
or 45 miles an hour, excuse me, and it takes half a second, we're going to go pretty far. All right, so we know that. This is 10 meters, which means we know that the second phase, the slowing down phase, also starts at 10 meters. Now we can do the second part. We want x final again, and I jump to this equation every time. So if I go back and redo this equation, does it work for us? x final equals x initial plus v initial t plus 1 half a t squared. All right, looking for x final. I now know my x initial. I know v initial. Don't know t. I know that. I know that. Don't know t. Okay, so we can't use it here because we don't know how much time it takes us to slow down. All right, we don't have time, which means that the other equation with time isn't going to be useful. Can't use this because it also has time. That leaves us only one equation. Let's hope this one's going to work. The final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times our acceleration times our change in distance. V final squared. We've got it. V initial. Yep. 2, yeah. A, yes. And now delta x, delta x is always final minus initial. So I'm looking for final, and I know my initial. It'll work. The delta x is just how far you went. So we can solve for how far we went, add it to the 10 meters, and we know where we ended. Okay, what do we got? Uh, I like cutting out all the zeros. So that one's zero. So we have zero equals b initial squared plus 2a delta x. Solving for delta x. If I do the rearranging, it's going to look like this. And if you need to pause the video and make sure you can do the math from this step to this step, go ahead. So when we solve for delta x, then we should get negative v initial squared over 2a. And that negative worries me a little bit, but let's, let's see what happens. So negative v initial 20, negative 20 squared over 2 times the acceleration. And here, that's going to save us. That negative and that negative cancel each other out. So we end up with negative 20 squared over negative 20. Okay, I can do that one in my head. So the negatives cancel out. 20 squared over 20, that leaves me with 20. So delta x is 20 meters. So to slow down from 20 meters per second to zero, at this rate, we take 20 meters to do it. So final position is 20 meters plus the 10 that we started with, 30 meters. And you might stop there and say, good, we're done. But don't, because we haven't answered the question. The question is, how much distance is between you and the deer when you come to a stop? All right, we ended up traveling a total of 30 meters which means that the distance between us is five meters. We stopped with about 15 feet to spare. And again, is that reasonable? Always stop and check if your answer is reasonable. And I would say, absolutely. This one looks reasonable to me. I'm stopping with just enough to spare. So at this point, I think we've solved the first problem. We've gone through, we've answered the question, we've checked that the answer is reasonable. I think we can move on to the next one. So for the second step, what is the maximum speed you could have and still not hit the deer? All right, so I'm going to use the same setup. Oh, I can still use that. And we're just going to have to figure out what numbers go in and what we're looking for. So what is the maximum speed you can have and not hit the deer? All right, so in this case, I don't know how fast I'm going to start, but I'm, I'm going to make an assumption. I'm assuming that the other variables are the same. So I'm going to assume that we start at 20 meters per second. Oh, no. Nope. Ha! Guess we're not, huh? We're not starting at 20. This is what we don't know. We don't know that, which means we don't know this, because this is our reaction time. We're still going to have half a second. I'm still going to say we start at zero, and we don't know how far we have gone. 
That's a lot of unknowns there. Okay, so then if we go to the slowing down phase, well, this X final is still going to be this X initial. What is the maximum speed you could have and still not hit the deer? So I'm going to say that we are going to travel instead of 35 meters, let's, you know, 34.9 meters, 34.95, that gives us this much room before we hit the deer. I hope you're all okay with me saying that's 35. We're just going to say we travel 35. And then we know we have to go just a little bit slower than that to start with and not hit the deer. So I'm going to say our ending is 35 meters. How fast are we going at the beginning of the slowing down stage? Don't know. How fast are we going when we finish the slowing down stage? We do know that one. We stop, so we end at rest. I'm again making the assumption that we're going to be slowing down at a rate of negative 10 meters per second squared. Don't know how long it takes us. We didn't even use that last time. We didn't figure out how long it takes us total to slow down. Okay, we could have, but we didn't need it. All right, so there's a lot of uh, unknowns here. We don't know time, the total time. We don't know how fast we're going. Uh, we don't know this. So we're looking for the initial speed. There are multiple ways to do this. So you can solve this a bunch of different ways. And if you have a way that makes sense to you, go ahead and use it. I'm just going to show you one way, whatever comes to mind right now. So I'm going to show you one way. All right. Can we solve it by knowing just the slowing down piece? So the slowing down piece, what is our equation? Um, last time we used this one. Let's see if that gets us anything useful. All right, so X final, which we do know, X initial, no, V initial, that's what we're looking for. We don't know time. We do know A, we know one half, and we don't know time. Ugh. All right, well, okay. How about this one? V final squared equals V initial squared. This is the other one we used last time. 2A delta X. So those are the two we ended up using for the first part. V final, okay, we do know that. V initial, this is what we're looking for. That's our question mark. We know 2, we know A. So if we could figure out delta X, how far we go before we slow down, or before we stop, excuse me, we could figure out how fast. Now, how do we figure out that? How far are we going? Well, delta X is the final position minus the initial position. And this is for slowing down. So I do know that this is 35. And I'm just going to call this um, X, um, XR. I'm going to call it the distance where we stop our reaction and start slowing down. And that means this is XR. So this is a distance traveled during our reaction time. OK, so delta x for slowing down is 35 minus whatever we went during our reaction phase. All right, so I can pop that in here, but I still have this unknown. OK, is there any way I can figure out the distance that we went as during our reaction time? OK, so now I'm going to go back to here. Can I figure out what this reaction time is? I don't know the velocity. I do know that. Okay, I think we used this one last time, so I'm going to go with a different color. So here, this is our reacting portion. X final equals X initial plus V initial T plus one half A T squared. Any zeros? Acceleration is zero. This whole term drops out. X initial is zero. That drops out. So what I'm left with here X final, oh, and that's XR. Okay, so let me just write that as my reaction distance is V initial times time 0.5. Okay, this is the only thing left that I don't know. But that's the same unknown as we have up here. That's what I'm looking for. This is a long process. <laughs> there are other ways to do it. But I'm going to say, okay, I can solve it with this if I know delta X. 
I can get a delta x by an equation that uses v initial. So if I think about this, I can put this into here, I can put this into here, that will give me an equation with only one unknown, with only v initial. So that's kind of complex. Let's give it a try. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into here, and then I'm going to put this into here. Okay, so my first step, xr equals v initial times 0.5, I'm putting that into this. So delta x equals 35 minus um, 0.5 v initial, half v initial, one half v initial. Okay, so that's putting that into there. Now I know what delta x is, I'm going to put delta x into that. v final, is that zero? That's my slowing down phase, that is zero, awesome. I can make my life at least a little bit better. Okay, so v final, which is zero, zero, equals v initial squared, and that's what I'm looking for, plus two times my acceleration, which is negative 10, times delta x, and there's my delta x. 35 minus one half v initial. Ooh, we're getting in here. Okay, and I'm right. The only unknown in this whole equation is v initial. So it's solvable. There's only one known. And I'm going to factor this into that uh, parenthetical statement. So v initial squared uh, minus 20. So I'm putting these two together first. Times 35 minus 1 half v initial. Okay. I need some room. I'm going to erase this. See if I can get some more room. Okay. Oh, oh man. And I'm just looking at this and saying that's v initial squared. That's v initial. That doesn't have any v's. It's going to be a quadratic. Let's figure out what it looks like. One more step and then we'll put it into the quadratic version. Minus 20 times 35. So I'm factoring this negative 20 into that. It's going to be negative 35 times 2 is 70, 700 negative 700, and then I'm going to factor the negative 20 over to the 1 half v initial. The negative and the negative makes it a positive. 20 times 1 half becomes 10, and I still have that v initial. Yeah, it's quadratic. So let's put it in the format of a quadratic, v initial squared plus 10 v initial minus 700. Okay, and at this point, we're going to use our quadratic formula. And when you do that, you always get two roots. So we get two answers when we do this with the quadratic. And if you need help using the quadratic in this case, go ahead and go to the math tutor room, go to the physics tutor room, uh, go to the Internet Khan Academy, whatever you need to figure out how to do the quadratic equation here. And you get two answers. I got, let's see, what did I get for two answers? I got 21 and a half meters per second. And I got negative 31 and a half meters per second. Well, how do we know which one is right? So here, is, again, we go for reasonableness. Which one is going to be reasonable? An initial velocity of 31.5 meters per second backwards. That negative sign means we have a backwards, leftwards velocity. I don't think that makes sense in this case. That really does not make sense. That's not reasonable. So I'm thinking our answer has to be this one. And before you just stop and walk away, again, is it reasonable? Is 21 and a half meters per second a reasonable amount of time, excuse me, a reasonable speed to slow down and just barely not hit the deer? Well, our original was moving at 20 meters per second and we had just five meters to spare. So in the first problem, we had 20 meters per second initial speed, and we ended up with not much space. So if we increase our speed by not a lot, 20 to 21.5, would it take up that little space? I would expect so. This seems like a reasonable answer. So our speed, and again, it's speed, not velocity, so all we care about is the number. Our speed is about 21 and a half meters per second to just barely not hit the deer. 
Again, have we answered the question? Well, the question was, what is the maximum speed you could have and still not hit the deer? We've answered the question. Have we checked its reasonableness? Yes, we have. And we've got units on our answer. I think we've got this one. So there is an example of a kinematics problem that is a little more difficult than just your straightforward ones. So it's, you can do it in these kind of two phases where we've got the reaction time and then we've got the slowing down to get the first part. And then we're using the same ideas for part two, but it's a little more complex. So that is your medium difficulty kinematics problem to practice with. All right, good job.